A few days ago, someone made a comment during one of our online prayer meetings about the importance of praising God, and it started me thinking. It's easy in times of trouble to go straight to asking God for help, and in an emergency that's fine. If it looks like a car's going to hit you, you don't have time for anything other than help! But what about other situations, when you've got more time? In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, the kingdom of Judah is under attack from a vast army. King Jehoshaphat goes into the temple and prays. It's worth looking at his prayer, but I'm going to talk about what happens next. God replies to Jehoshaphat, so the next day the army marches out to battle. Verse 20. Early in the morning they left for the desert of Tekoa. As they set out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Listen to me, Judah and people of Jerusalem. Have faith in the Lord your God, and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets, and you will be successful. After consulting the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord, and to praise him for the splendour of his holiness, as they went out of the head of the army, saying, Give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. As they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, who were invading Judah, and they were defeated. It's not the normal way we would expect an army to approach battle. But this wasn't a normal battle. It was one that was beyond their capabilities. However, it wasn't beyond God's capabilities. You may be aware of the mnemonic ACTS, A-C-T-S. It's intended to help us when we pray. It starts with the letter A for adoration. And it's meant to tell us that we should start our times of prayer with adoration, praising God. But why should we start by praising God? Well, it's not because we need to remind God of who he is. He knows better than we do. And it's not because he needs flattering. God's name is Yahweh. It's sometimes translated as I am, all in capital letters, or I am who I am. But it's one of those Hebrew words that doesn't translate easily into English. It's in a tense that English doesn't have. The best translation is possibly I always have been, I am and I always will be, who I always have been, I am and always will be. It's rather clumsy, so you can see why the shortened version gets used. But it tells us two things. God is beyond our understanding, and God is unchanging. So he knows who he is. We don't need to tell him, but we do need to remind ourselves. It's about us, about reminding us who God is, so that we are encouraged in our faith and start our prayers in the right frame of mind, knowing that he is a God who both answers prayer and has power. The same God who did all those miracles in the Bible, the same God who set ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir who were invading Judah, is the God who is listening to our prayer. As Jehoshaphat and the people of Jerusalem marched out into battle praising God, we need to go into our prayers the same way. When we start our prayers with adoration, we start to put our minds into the right place, approaching him with confidence. Confidence not in ourselves, but in him. So next time you pray, don't forget to start by putting him in the place that he belongs.